Hello, welcome to J Studio. Uh, this, what will follow, will be a set of videos um, having to do with calibrating uh, your new ER20 printer from Arion. Um, this is not going to be a standard set of assembly or uh, like bed leveling or some of the your overall just basics of putting together the printer because there are already videos on those topics available uh, on YouTube and other places uh, for that matter on the Facebook pages that everyone has um, pretty easily to find that help. What's a little bit less easy to find is like a hands-on kind of demonstration talk through of what you do to really dive in for just a few days after you set up your, you get your printer put together and really uh, kind of calibrate it, make it work uh, better to produce better prints uh, in ways that once you take care of it right from the initial, uh, the initial part of setting up your printer, you won't wrestle, or hopefully won't wrestle, with some of the same problems. Speaking of bed leveling, you're watching my ER20 go through a bed leveling routine right now. I'm just doing that for ambiance. So, this video is more going to be more of an introduction video of some of the software uh, slash, or I say software, some of the programs, online resources that we are going to use while uh, doing this series of videos. So, uh, specifically, and I'm going to transition over here to, to the computer, we are going to use primarily a resource called teachingtechyt.github.io. Um, and uh, this is run uh, by an individual who also has a very uh, respected YouTube channel. You should like, subscribe. Just go to Teaching Tech or YouTube uh, in the search bar at YouTube to say Teaching Tech and you'll find him. And he goes through a lot of these things uh, with uh, uh, some tutorials, etc. for uh, kind of generic printers. My set of videos is going to be directly... Uh, concerning the ER20, um, and hopefully we'll produce some values that you can use to start if you want to do that before you actually get into calibration. Um, I own several printers, uh, but uh, namely two Airy ones, which is going to, uh, and uh, in fact, if you'll pardon the movement, there's my Airy One uh, Thinker SE working on the top of a dark tower. Um, some eye candy there for the print as it's actually getting close to finishing up. Uh, this is just the top of a pretty massive tower. But anyway, I've got two Airy One printers. Both the ER20 and the Thinker SE use the same hot end, so that gives me some knowledge that I'll be referring to as I go through uh, the calibration process. But again, this video is about the resources we're going to use. And we're going to talk about two things on this video. We're going to talk about this Teaching Tech website. Again, you should be able to read it there, Teaching, and it'll be down in the comments. Uh, there'll be a link to this site, um, and you'll notice that uh, this is the in this is kind of the introduction page. Uh, you'll notice there's this green bar which has steps that Teaching Tech would like you to kind of or not like you, but probably recommends that you go kind of in order. Although I won't go completely in order here for each one of these things, um, there I will explain when I don't. So uh, the purpose, though, of bringing you here right now, since we're not going to actually talk about a specific calibration step right now, is to kind of show you something, uh, the, the kind of the way the site works to generate the files that you'll need to print. And I'm going to start with um, the, uh, the retraction, or I, in fact, let's start with temperature tuning, because um, you're going to do this for every filament, and I have a separate, there'll be a separate video just on the temperature tuning for this particular filament that I'm looking at. Um, but this is what uh, what he will do um, on each of these pages is he'll give you like this is what we're looking to do this is the aim what's required these are the tools which is usually the G code generator on the page and then there's some notes that are worthwhile reading then you get into the actual generation of generating some G code or generating a G code file that you will then plop onto your SD card plop into your printer and print. Um, so first of all, it's going to ask whether you want some additional start G code. I say yes. And then I cut and paste um, 
at this now this particular window isn't set up yet for me but um for example i've just thrown in their m221 s110 uh, that's basically saying that i want the flow rate for uh, this g code to be at 110 percent not 100 percent not just the standard 100 percent but i actually typically cut and paste into here the entire start g code of the printer as you got it set up on Cura. And again, my videos aren't going to talk about setup uh, because there's lots of videos from Airy One and others on that. But I just take the start G code text and I go ahead and plop it in here. So it, uh, for me, what that does is it is before every one of these test G codes, let's use my finger here to show you, it uh, the, the official Airy One start G code actually does a prime line, which primes the nozzle, gets some, gets some plastic flowing before going and printing these calibration prints. I found that that makes the calibration prints a lot more successful uh, and, and a lot more reliable. Anyway, I print in my start G code. Then you're gonna need to put in your bed dimensions uh, for the ER20, that's 250 by 220. Uh, none of these are gonna need a Z dimension and there's not even a field for that. Um, I use a bed temperature of 65 um, and then I will lower it to 60 after the first layer. So just 65 for adhesion, 60 for the rest of the print. I leave uh, the 100% fan from layer two is standard, so I leave that alone, not use an ABL, so I leave that at the default. And then you'll notice for the retraction setting, it's gonna ask you to put retract, or in this case, for the temperature tuning, it's gonna talk about retraction. We're gonna have a separate video about tuning retraction. You'll be able to enter those values here. Um, in fact, I know for my printer, uh, or for my ER20 now, or I know this is going to be 4, and the retraction speed is going to be 40. But this is what I wanted to get to for this video. What, you're, what we're going to do with each one of these G-code generators is we're going to be putting a set of variables into some fields. We're going to print the, the, the model. It usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes to print these small models. And then you're going to look at the results and evaluate what's best. And you notice here um, that the default values have you printing a temperature tower from 190 um, all the way up to 210. Um, and uh, we're, we'll talk specifically about the temperature tuning uh, for the ER20 and this particular filament uh, in a separate video. But the goal here is to put together uh, a set of variables over here on the screen, right over here, around which... Uh, that should bracket your ideal setting. And then when you look at the print, and we'll look at the prints together as we go through these videos, we're going to choose what setting is ideal, uh, or the best compromise really is what we're looking for in engineering speak, um, for each one of these settings, which will make our eventually, you know, the whole goal is to make our prints better and to kind of take care of some problems right from the get-go instead of having to try to troubleshoot why that two-day print I uh, really had an issue with uh, with something, and, it, and you used a lot of PLA for nothing, or whatever filament you're using. So this is the site we're going to be using. The other site that I want to that I want to show you, or it's not even a site; it's a program. It's called Pronterface. I'll bring that up. You can use this is a terminal program, and you don't need to use Pronterface. Uh, you could, there are, there are other terminal programs that are available. But for this set of videos, I will be using Pronterface to enter in uh, our calibration into the EEPROM of the printer. What is Pronterface? It's a program that speaks directly to the main board in your printer. In this case, I believe it's a 32-bit uh, main board, but I, and I'm not sure of the vendor. I think it's AT Mega. Um, but it doesn't matter. What, what, what matters is being able to communicate directly to it in order to give it direct commands and to modify variables within your firmware. Um, and this is free. You can just Google Pronterface, download it, start it, um, and it, you know, connect it up. Uh, I've just got it connected from the USB with the, with the included USB cable with the ER20. I just connected that to my laptop. Right up here at the top, there's a little button. You see where it says disconnect. It actually says connect before that happened. I knew the baud rate was 115.2 because, why did, how, how did I know that? Because when I went to about on my printer, sorry, let me, before I forget this, I need to store my bed level. Okay, so let's go back up to main, 
Go to Bout Printer. There we go, and went to the board. About printer, board, and it says that this is the, uh, uh, the baud rate is 115, 200. Uh, so I knew that was what I needed. So in Pronterface, I set that for 115, 200. I hit connect right now where it says disconnect. And in fact, let's go ahead and just do that. Let me disconnect and reconnect and I can show you what things look like. So let's disconnect the printer. Now I'll connect the printer. And when I connect the printer down here, this is the window on the right here, kind of like a chat window, um, where you will be able to see uh, your commands and whether they're accepted. And what it shows me there is it says, right starting about here, it says connecting, blah, 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 SD card okay, it's testing connections. We're, if you see anything like that, this kind of text, that means you're connected to the printer and things are fine. And it, this box underneath is where we're going to enter commands to send. I'll enter a really quick command, M503, which is just going to recall all the variables of the printer. And then we get this nice set where it's basically telling me uh, every all the settings within the printer. So, for example, it's tell, uh, let me pick out one line that you might find in, uh, or that might be something that we're going to look at in one of the very first videos is E-Steps. And the M92 line, if we go to the right here, we see E100. Right now, the ESEPs are set at 100. And we're going to be testing that uh, to see whether that's the correct setting to be there. And we would enter an M92 command, E whatever, once we actually decide what those steps are, uh, to modify it. But we'll be going through that as we go through the videos. I just wanted to acquaint, uh, to, to make you all acquainted with the software, or excuse me, the, the internet site, the teaching tech site and the terminal program Pronterface uh, to, uh, that we're going to use to uh, uh, be doing this calibration. Last note before I stop this video, um, before you can hook up your printer, and this, is, this, is, uh, this can be found in a couple of other like uh, tutorials, etc., but don't forget that on the SD card that came with your printer, there are also, there's a folder uh, that has USB drivers. You're going to need to install those drivers on your laptop um, or else you're not going to be able to run this terminal program. It's really easy. Uh, you're just going to install those drivers and everything's going to work just fine. Uh, install the drivers. When you hook up the printer the first time, it'll say that it's installing the device just like if you slipped in a new USB drive uh, and then you'll be good to go. All right. That's it for this video. Uh, we're going to start with the calibration uh, on the, in the next videos and look forward to having you uh, to join me for uh, this, this kind of journey to calibrate uh, the ER20 printer.